Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome to Cash Talks Football, where I break down all the goals, apparently now in the Carabao Cup, or the League Cup. Uh, today we're doing Liverpool against Fulham, and I use my over 20 plus years of coaching experience to break down goals, give you some tips and insights to something you may not have seen or uh, heard on another channel. Now one thing I'm going to comment a little bit about is the way that Liverpool set up, and I, I did watch this game so I can um, uh, give a little bit more insight than I would normally do. Now they have this wee guy over here, Harvey Elliott, playing up front. Before I, oh, I start commentating on the goal and how terrible these defenders are doing one problem when you have a midfielder playing up front he wants to drop in and get involved in the play and then what happens is your other midfielder who's close who's ryan gravenberg ends up doing nothing because the guy that's supposed to be up front on the right hand side isn't he's actually tucking in and playing in the right hand side midfield where he's comfortable where he naturally plays where he always runs you can say oh yeah but he's supposed to i know where he's supposed to stay but you can't do it he's not making any runs in behind the fullback the fullback can always push onto him because the fullback's never scared that he's going to run in behind or do anything because it's not his natural game and if you can see he's a player standing with his back like that. Well, that's how this midfielder is receiving the ball. The problem with the midfielder receiving the ball doing that, he's not trying to turn the player. Because if you try to turn the player in the midfield, nine times out of ten, if you lose it, they're going to score a goal on you. Up front, you can afford to do that because, well, there's another line and another line. So his entire system of play doesn't work when you just go, oh, we'll just stick him up front because he's left-footed like Mo Salah. It doesn't work. And you can see the whole system of Liverpool was terrible. When he made some subs, you could see the game changed. Why? Because suddenly they had three people up front with that whole system relies on to make space in behind and then everything changed but let's uh let's comment onto these a little uh, on this a little bit more and i want to watch this guy here joe gomez and i think well okay he's playing left back and then he's a right back i'll give him a little bit there and he's not really a right back he's a center back okay so i've got to give him some credibility there but he's going to win a header and this is all van uh virgil van dyke the most overrated um Defender in the Premier League, in my opinion. It's not like he's not good. He's just overrated. Is he in the top 10? Yeah. Is he in the top 5? Yeah. Is he the best top 3? No. Used to be. Not anymore. He's overrated. Right, as the ball comes in here, watch who's going to actually challenge for the ball. Oh, not Gomez. And he doesn't do anything. He lets the ball bounce. Then there's no challenge. And all of a sudden, there's a problem right here. Now, this is why I'm telling you Van Dijk is overrated. If he is a world-class centre-back, like he used to be before he was injured, he's putting this ball out of play. He's not. Watch where the ball goes there he goes and he heads it into the middle of the field can we see that let's play that back just as just a wee split second this is what i'm talking about if he's a world-class center back he's knocking the ball this way and he's not knocking it into the middle of the field he's not doing that i'll tell you why he's doing that is because he can see curtis jones and he think he can get enough purchase on it to play the ball past him and away there i get it i know why he's trying to do it and he's made a mistake fine but that's there's a little bit of a difference there where he's quite not quite on you know got the right balance and the right purchase on the ball instead of making it safe he tries to keep playing it given to Curtis Jones here and then all of a sudden there's a problem Dosh, look you can see he's trying to play it to him this guy's read it all the way by the way Joe Gomez who came in who didn't challenge for the header and let it bounce is still standing still now this guy's not sure what to do um, and quite frankly, I quite like him where he is because there's no need to make a decision yet. He wants to come in and slow the angle. So, you know, after this guy's first touch, he wants to be about here so he can stop the angle here. Let's see what he ends up doing as we come forward here. Dosh, there he is. He starts to come towards there. Absolutely fine with that. Starting to cut the angle down because he's the only one goal side. Van Dijk is trying to get back goal side. Joe Gomez is still walking. Joe Gomez is still walking. He could be tracking this player here. He could be going back. He could be doing anything. Remember, he was on the initial challenge with these two players. So if he just kept running the same pace that these two players did, he'd be where either one of these players are. He didn't. Keeps going. Sees a pass here. Right back. Here's the problem. If you look at the body shape, you see where his shoulders are and his head's facing this way. He really wants to be tucked back in already. So his shoulders are here and his head's facing that way. So if this pass is played, he can step on and clear it. His body shape's all wrong. He's had time to uh, to adjust. Still had time to adjust. Now he has to adjust. And what he's actually doing, he's trying to stab at the ball with his right foot. And his body shape's completely wrong. And he falls over. And I think uh, maybe he's a young kid. He, something, uh, it could be a million reasons he's fell over. I'm not going to try to you know judge somebody on that. But then, Joe Gomez is still walking. Then we've got two centre-backs now. They're on top of each other. Goes to pressure the ball, but he puts his hands behind his black behind his back because he's trying to stop the shot and not win the ball. This happens all of the time. This is because they're overcoached. 
Coach to go win the football? No, no, no. Coach to block the shot. That's what they're doing right there. Look at his hands. He's not trying to actually win the football. He's trying to stop the shot. The shot wasn't taken. He drifts on past, tucks it between his legs, and gets a good goal there. I quite frankly, can't even tuck even talk about the keeper because the keeper was unsighted he's got no hope from that sort of range through his defender's legs can't see him doing anything to anything better there let's have a look at the liverpool goals before we get on to the liverpool goal i want to watch uh i'm just going to show you another little highlight from this joe gomez character again uh, here he is right here watch this okay this is a coaching point for you as this ball gets played he stands on the halfway line dosh Look, the rest of his team goes, he's completely onside. Look at the difference in that spacing there, where he's not staying in line. Even the young kid, he's staying in line. Look, and he's stepped up. Yeah, can't do that. Well, <sighs> there's so many problems with it. So many problems. With it. I don't know why Van Dijk hasn't, uh, you know, told him that they're dropping. I don't know why he's stepping towards the ball. When the Look, there's no pressure on that ball, and it's an easy ball in behind. He has to stay with his player. He can't just let him run in behind him, and he does. And this should have been a goal, and it goes off. And look how far behind Gomez is just because he doesn't stay with his player. He's, he can't be playing him offside with a loop ball like that. There's no VR on this game. He knows all of these things, and yet still... He makes a massive mistake, and uh, Fulham probably should have got themselves a goal, but this wee man didn't cross the ball. He had a shot instead. Let's go on to the Liverpool goals. Here's a little bit of a difference. I want to show, highlight this for you. All of, all of a sudden, you've got one, two, three players, even though Jot has dropped into uh, down here in, in midfield. Without Harvey Elliott on the field, you've actually got three people that are trying to sort of... Um, Take all the presence of the people up front, which helps them get in behind, give them extra space, and maybe create a bit of space in midfield. But this goal is a little bit of Jota's persistency here. He gets a lucky little nick on the ball, and as he does, Bosch. But there is a mistake, and I want you to watch this centre-back here. And this is what you don't do. And uh, as the ball breaks here, Bosch, okay, he steps forward, and now he's decided he's not going to go to the ball, which is the right decision, by the way. Why it's the right decision is because there's another player with him, and if he steps to that ball, right, if he steps to that ball there, Bosch, he just plays the ball in behind and the player there just runs in and hits it into the net box. He does the right thing by stepping back. Well done, young man. Well done. But this is where he makes the mistake. So he's done He's done everything right there. He's taken the space away. So that ball can't be played. He's given the space to here. So this, think about it. There's two levels of space. He can either step forward and give him the space behind or drop off and give him the space in front of him. Have the space in front of me, mate. You're not having it behind me. Take your shot. See if you can beat my keeper from there. Well, he does. But he does it because of the defender's help. As we go here, I'm going to change to the other angle. So this is the other angle I'm talking about. He needs to stand strong there and take that right in the chest. He doesn't. What he does is he turns. And as he turns, he turns his back to it. Probably a little bit too quick. Turns his back, nicks his shoulder, and goes in. If that's a flat surface, it hits the flat surface, and it bounces back away from the goal. It's not a flat surface. It's like a little bony bit of a shoulder, and it hits that, and it goes could go anywhere. And it does, and it goes into the corner of the goal. He just needed to be strong. That's weak, poor defending. If I give you 35, 45 grand a week to take a, uh, you know, a football in the chest once, maybe, or twice a season, you'd do it. He needs to do it too. That's being poor, that's being weak, and he needs to be stronger in that situation. Let's get on to the next goal. Again, you can see there's four players, because basically when you've got three players up front, okay, when you've got one, two, three up front, you just need a plus one. So if you're ever doing anything with coaching or um, and you're trying to teach people how to become a, you know, a dynamic fullback, the only thing you really do is add one. What does that mean? So if you've got your defensive line, add one to the midfield line. So your, your left or your right back, one of them go forward and add one. So you've got more players in midfield. From your midfield line to your forward line, you want to add one. Go up and add to your forwards. This is what he's doing here. He's adding one to um, you know, to the forward line. Just add one. Why don't you go up and add, a lot, uh, add an extra player to the midfield? Um, and that's what they're doing exactly right here. As he goes, though, it opens up this space. Can you see this space here? Because they're on a little bit of a transition as well. It's not a little bad ball, Bosch. And Darwin actually came on and made a massive difference. Um, but here's the other thing. Because he's actually facing the goal and he's not looking to turn back and pass and keep possession, he's trying to penetrate to get to the byline, everybody else has to drop. And because they're dropping, they open up the space for Gakpo here. If he's not trying to get to the byline, these players aren't running this way to try to stop him. 
what they're doing is they're facing this way to stop them when they're passing the ball around. Arsenal were doing, and Chelsea were doing the same thing, or oh, we're all passing the ball around. No, try to run them to the byline. The reason you run them to the byline is because then you create space here, because they have to go, and you open up space in the middle, and if they don't go with you, you can run a kick in the goal. So let's have a little look what he does. As he goes, bosh, 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 you can see the space. They've gone, they've had to go with him. Now it opens up the middle, and he gets a little tidy finish, and Liverpool get themselves a goal. Overall, I think Fulham's game plan was pretty tasty in uh, the second leg. If Fulham are smart, they can turn over Liverpool because they can concede a goal. But um, they do have firepower up front. They're just not sure how to play it, to be honest. They've got just too many players um, and they just don't know how to fit them all together just yet. They'll figure that out. I mean, when they get it right, they score goals on you. When they get it wrong, they don't. It's that simple. But they will get it right over 90 minutes. Klopp will find a way. So uh, the second leg is going to be interesting. Very interesting. I can see the second leg behind the penalties, you know. Um, I'll see you then on Cash Talks Football. Mm -hmm.